If you've clicked on this video and you're a beginner with Blender and you've never really made anything, you're kind of just getting into it, I promise you that this is the best and easiest tutorial you'll ever watch because there is nothing that I can think of that is simpler to do than a tennis ball in Blender. This tennis ball took me under three minutes to make. That's opening a fresh document, no add-ons, no plugins, no textures, just jumping into Blender and making it. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do it. Now, obviously the tutorial will take a little bit longer than three minutes because I'm explaining it, but this is really one of the best beginner exercises you can possibly do. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you in real time how to do it. We're not gonna be doing any time lapses. So what you wanna do is you wanna jump into Blender and just open up a new document. You wanna click and drag and just select all of the default objects and press delete so you have a fresh blank scene. Now to make our tennis ball, we're simply gonna go Shift A in the 3D workspace. We're gonna go to our mesh option and under the drop down, we're just gonna give it a UV sphere. Now with this UV sphere, we'll go over up here with it selected and just change to edit mode. Let's go into our front orthographic view by pressing one on the number pad. You can also just come up here to view and then go down to viewport and go to the front orthographic. Once you're in the front view, make sure to enable the X-ray up here so you can kind of select through the sphere because if you didn't have that enabled and you clicked and dragged, you would only select what's in your view but not behind here. So the X-ray makes sure in your front view that if you click and drag, it selects all the way through. But what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna come here to our face select option. We're just gonna click and drag and just select half of these faces in the very front. And you can see it's the very half because you see that blue line running here. That is our Z axis line in the front orthographic view. Now you only see that in the orthographic view. So that's why we're in the front orthographic view. Also makes selection easier. So with that done, we're gonna go press P. And once you press P, you're gonna click here on selection. So it just makes that its own separate object. So we're gonna go back into object mode. Let's turn off the X-ray. And let's select this half over here by clicking on it. And we're still in that front view. We're just gonna go R, X, so R and then X, and then type in nine zero on your keyboard and hit enter. So R, X, nine zero. And now with it selected, hold in shift so you can select the second sphere as well. So they're both active. And then press control J or command J to join it together. And at the moment in edit mode, it's still two separate pieces. So if we go into edit mode, and by the way, I'll press tab on my keyboard. The tab key is a shortcut for in and out of edit mode, but you can just come up here if it's easier for you. But in edit mode, these are two, still two separate objects. And what we can do is we can go ahead, or at least I should say two separate pieces of mesh would be more accurate. We can press A to select everything. We can press F3 on our keyboard and just type in merge and go to merge by distance. And then come over here and just knock it up just a little bit. And now this should all be one piece. And you can test that by selecting any face on either side and going Control L or Command L. And if it's all one piece, it should all be selected, okay? So now that we have this done, let's go over to our Edge Select option. Let's come over here and let's see this nice edge running here in the middle. You can see it flowing around. We're just gonna hold Shift and Alt in. So Shift and Alt at the same time. And then left click on one of these edges and it'll loop all the way around selecting that seam running around that, like that. Then you can press Control and B, so Control B on your keyboard, Control B, and then move your mouse to create a bevel. And let's give it a nice bevel like this and then click. With it still active, you're gonna press E to extrude and then right click. And with it still active, you're gonna go Alt S, so Alt S, and then move your mouse and you can scale in along the normals. Let's scale in a little bit like so and then click. Then with our edge select still selected, make sure to just go Alt A to deselect everything. And then come in here and go Shift Alt, holding those two in again, and just select this edge, this edge, and this edge, and this edge. So these four edges, the loops, right? And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Control B again. So Control B, and then just give it a very fine bevel. If you hold in Shift while you do that, you can control it a bit better. We're just gonna give it a very fine bevel and then click. And then we're gonna come in here in the center, hovering over one of these edges here in the middle, you can go Control R. You should see a yellow line looping and then just roll your middle mouse button once to add in two segments, double click, and then go Alt S just to scale them out slightly. There we go. With them still selected, we're gonna go Control Plus to grow the selection. And we're gonna press Control Plus again, so we grow it twice. Then let's quickly go to our materials. Let's go new. Let's call this material ball. And let's just go down to our viewport display. There we go. 
Now under the viewport display, let's just change this to green so we can see it's been applied. And then let's just scroll back up. Just minimize some of these ones here. And scrolling back up, we'll get plus again and go new. And let's call this seam. And in the, under the viewport display, we'll leave it white, but we'll just come here and click on it. And with this still active here, we we'll just click assign and now it assigns that material. Now we're gonna to go to our modifiers, add modifier, search and type in sub, give it a subdivision surface modifier, bump it up and then let's tab back out into object mode. Let's right click and go shade smooth. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our particles tab, click plus. We're gonna change it to hair and then let's bring that hair length way down. So you can hold and shift if it's easier just to control it a little bit better. There we go. And then we wanna come here to the um, render. We wanna come here and enable the B spline. And then we wanna scroll down to this tab here called children, drop it down and make it interpolate it. And let's come here to the viewport and let's change it to 30. And then let's scroll down a little bit and let's come here to roughness. Let's give it uniform a little bit. Let's drag the end point a little bit. Let's drag the random a little bit. And this is also tamper with the size, just a little bit. There we go. So now you can see this is what we have. We've made it look a little bit more fluffy and uneven. And what we're gonna do now is we wanna make sure the distribution is not where the seam is. So let's quickly go over to our object data properties. Let's tab it back into edit mode. We still have the seam selected. So let's come here to the vertex group and click plus. With it selected, we're gonna click on assign to assign those verts. Let's go back into object mode. Let's go over to our particle system and let's scroll down all the way to vertex groups and then under the density, click here and select that group. Now, um, what we can do is we just come here to the little invert just to flip that around to make it the negative and now it's everywhere else, okay? There we go. And now we're gonna to come to our hair shape. We're gonna make the root diameter 0.4. And now what we can do is go to our render settings up here on the little camera, scroll up, change your render engine to cycles. If you do have a GPU on your computer and you have it enabled, you can come to the devices and change it to GPU. Otherwise you can just stick to CPU. It's just gonna take a little bit longer to render. And then under your render here, you wanna to go to the max samples and make it 45, should be fine. And now let's go in the front view. We're gonna go shift A, just add in a camera. I'm gonna move my camera back like so. I'm gonna change the focal length on the camera settings to 120. And I might just move my camera back just a little bit more, there we go. And then I'm gonna press zero on my number pad to go into the camera view, like so. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna to go to our light options, add in an area light. We're gonna go G and Z with that new light, move it up and click. Change its size to two meters. Give it a strength of 150. And now go into your camera view and go Z. So pressing Z and then click on rendered. And now you should see this. And with this light active, you can go over here and change your transform pivot to 3D cursor. Then you can go shift D to duplicate and R to rotate and then rotate a light and click. Then go R, Z and rotate it behind the ball a little bit and click. And then you can go shift D and duplicate and rotate that guy and click. So essentially now we're just shift D to duplicate, R to rotate and we're creating more lights from different angles. And I'm gonna go with something like this, looks really good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our render settings. We're gonna scroll down to our film and under here, we're gonna change it to transparent. So we have a transparent background if we wanna render this out as a PNG with an alpha channel. Now let's select our ball. Let's simply go over to our materials, which we've already added. So let's click on the ball. And under the surface drop down here, we're gonna to come to the base color and make it a tennis ball color. Nice and saturated. And there you have it. Now let's press Z. Let's go to solid. Make sure to save. I'm gonna save this to my desktop. And now go render and render image. And there you have it. Your first object that you've modeled and made and rendered in Blender, hopefully. And you can see here, this um, is really simple. It really does take about three or four minutes to make this. Obviously it took me a little bit longer because I'm explaining it to you. But if I was doing this without doing a tutorial, I could easily knock it out in about three minutes. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. 
Give a like, subscribe, and check out some other content. I'll see you next time.